Hey guys, so this video is going to be a one year update on my EG4 18K PV. So how it's been doing for me for the last year. And at the time of filming this, I'm right around one week off of it being a full year. So I think I can claim a year's time of use at this point. So if you guys aren't too familiar with the unit, I'll just go over some quick specs and then I'll jump into my thoughts on it. This is a 12 kilowatt output inverter and it can utilize 18,000 watts of solar, hence the 18K PV name. It's got four separate PV inputs, but it's essentially three. So the first two are for paralleling and then two and three are separate inputs. The PV has a range of 120 volts up all the way to 600 volts VOC for this. This is a hybrid inverter, so it can utilize the grid in different ways that off-grid inverters can't. It also has AC coupling, so if you have existing solar that is grid tied right now, it can run through the unit there and utilize it also. But yeah, I've been using it off-grid this entire time. So I've been powering my whole home for the last year. And as a lot of you probably know from some of my previous videos, I have an all electric home. We're right around 2,200 square feet, something like that. We have two different HVAC units because it's a two story home. We also have electric oven, all the basics, hot water heater, all that stuff. In the winter, we do have a wood stove for heat, but in the summer, we use our HVAC system, just a central air system. Uh, there's a two ton and a two and a half ton. So we use those constantly. So summer is actually where we get the most usage out of the unit. And along the lines of solar, I have around 14,700 watts, something like that hooked into this unit. So in the first solar input, I have 8,000 watts going in and that's the array I built as a roof. You guys might've seen that in some other videos. I also did a video on the second array, a Unistrut array, and that is around 4,000 watts. And then the final, small array that I have is on the shop roof here and that's 2700 watts so that's the third array. So close to 15,000 watts has been doing great for us to be able to power all our loads and charge the batteries. I think I'm going to add another small array soon though so that's going to be in an upcoming video. And summertime is really when we put the inverter to the test because we have an AC unit running out here in the shop, as well as the two central air units in the house, plus all of our typical loads. So we'll see it pretty often at around 11,000 watts sustained for quite some time. But this unit has a pretty lengthy surge time. So we will shoot up to 14 kilowatts or a little past that for a brief moment if the water well comes on or something like that, but it can handle that. But there is limits. We can't run both ovens plus all the HVACs and do everything else we want at the same time. So we still manage loads, but it's just a lot easier. I'm still using the cellular dongle here on the inverter and that's worked great. I think I put that in like a month or so after I installed the unit. So I've had that running for around 11 months and the actual cell service around the area here has dropped, I think twice, but the cellular dongle hasn't had any issue at all. So yeah, that's been great the entire time. They've come up with a number of firmware updates since I installed the unit. Most of them would apply to grid tie and hybrid functions of the inverter, but they have come out with a few updates that are focused around 120 and 240 volt loads. And they came out with another firmware update for the unit here right before I started making the video. And that was focused around surge for the unit. So to be able to handle inductive loads better. It already handles them fantastic. I'll tag Marcus, he's at EG4. I'll tag a video that he made for the 18K PV starting a five ton AC unit without a soft start. I'm still amazed at the surge capability of these units. I mean, I do everything around my house, yes, but seeing videos like he made of starting a massive unit like that without any issue, I think he even had a heater on one leg or something like that to be able to show how much it can handle. So I'll jump real quick into a screenshot of what it looks like on my app as far as numbers, how much I've used, how much I've made over the last year. I'll also show what it looks like on the EG4 monitoring app. So you guys, if you'd missed it before, I did show it on another video on the 6000 XP with that indoor power pro model, but you can see each pack now, uh, each battery pack and it's state of charge, state of health, temperature, all that. So I'll show that here in just a minute. And so here's the app and you guys can see on the right there, midway down, that's total usage. I'm getting close to 12 megawatts of total power usage through the unit here. And then upper left, you can push the pie chart there too. 
to check on different things but that is total pv yield um so total solar yield so far is so that's today's usage but so far i've got around 12 megawatts almost 13 megawatts of solar usage through the unit and i've seen quite a few people on the solar forum that have had the unit less time than me but have uh, much more pv input because they have more solar plus they have been exporting to grid there so they have a grid tie agreement and here's the eg4 web monitor page that i mentioned before and you can see the two outdoor pro models down at the bottom and that's their state of health state of charge even battery temperatures everything on both individual batteries now and if you guys look at the far right there you'll see that orange spike so the inverter was i think it was around 14.2 kilowatts and then ended up being i think the dryer was on uh, both ac units were on one of the ovens was on so yeah, we, we do that pretty frequently in the warmer months, like I mentioned. See if I can focus in here with my fat fingers and get a little closer. Yeah, so it's showing consumption at a little under 14 kilowatts. I know I was just a little over there because I was next to the unit. So it's probably just a matter of focusing in right in the right spot. But yeah, it handles it well. So yeah, if I had to sum it up, guys, I'd say this inverter does its job and doesn't complain about anything. So we're coming into the month of May. I love this time of year. Lots of sunshine. And I'm usually charged right around 11.30, 11 o'clock in the morning, something like that. So I'm fully charged at that point. And like I've talked about in the past, the unit goes completely quiet. So after that, it's not charging or discharging anything major. It has to be around 6,000 watts. So the unit basically hibernates the rest of the time. I think the house is using close to 2,500 watts right now but there's no sound coming from the 18K PV. Everything's quiet. And that's sort of the challenge here. When you come up on a year, you wanna be able to talk about the unit and you don't wanna just say, hey, it works and it makes power. Uh, but it, it's sort of, it works and it makes power, right? I mean, I do like the cellular app. I, I can uh, go through anything and change any settings if I needed to, but I really don't need to. I, I leave everything basically the way it's working and everything works. So, um, for the past year, it's been working and it's still working. So uh, I didn't want to just say that. I wanted to show some other um, aspects of the unit as well. But I've had a lot of people ask for an update on the unit because there's still a lot of people considering buying it or the people that have owned it for less time than me are wondering if it's, you know, if there's going to be any issue coming down, you know, six months, eight months down the road. Yeah, and I can honestly say zero issues. So it's the closest thing I've, I've had as far as operating with inverters to grid because it just runs so smoothly. So it just, it's, it's like having grid power. As a matter of fact, they were clearing the power lines recently with a helicopter. It was actually pretty neat. I'll show you guys some video footage of that. But yeah, they ended up, they turned the power off to the whole area here when they did that for obvious reasons, just in case they hit something. Uh, but I wasn't aware of it. My neighbor mentioned it to me later, how it was out for around three hours while they were doing all the trimming. But yeah, that's just a cool aspect of having a backup system or you're off grid. You just don't, uh, you're not subject to what happens to the rest of the grid there. You're basically, you're on your own, you're independent. So that's a big aspect of why we wanted this type of system here. And really, I mean, we lost power so often, which I guess they're trying to be proactive now by clearing the power lines a little further back. But it seemed like a brisk wind would knock our power out. And that's kind of what started this whole solar journey here, to be able to have a backup system that was something that was consistent because we kept losing power so often. I installed an 18K PV for in my father's house probably around eight months ago, something like that. And his has been working fantastic also. So yeah, I would highly recommend this unit. In the future, I will keep you guys posted. If there's any malfunctions or anything like that, I'll let you guys know. So I'll leave a link in the description below to this unit and uh, you guys can check out some of my other videos on it if you have any other questions about specs or installation. So that's going to about wrap it up. I really appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.